the last day before summer vacation, the students are causing all sorts of trouble, harassing the security guards and damaging school property. They don't care about the teachers except for one, Ron Strickland, the fearsome history teacher. He scolded the boys for ruining a commemorative bat and sent everyone back to their classrooms. Andy Campbell, the English teacher, is his complete opposite, meek and non-confrontational. The gym teacher is frustrated, saying that the unruly students are unteachable. Another teacher lost it and started looking for something to steal in the staff room, but Strickland walked in and stopped him. Everyone immediately fell silent. The big man demanded someone show him how to use the coffee machine. For example, that bearded teacher. Campbell tried to be as polite and courteous as possible. All the teachers are worried about potential layoffs today. Young psychologist Holly tells Andy that two other English teachers have already been fired. She accidentally reveals that she smokes methamphetamine. Andy's wife is about to give birth and is currently preparing their eldest daughter for a contest. They will perform a dance number together. Andy caught a boy masturbating in the bathroom stall. The boy was outraged at being interrupted and continued his activity laughing and staring the teacher in the eye. Hearing the commotion, Miss Monet looked into the bathroom and was quite surprised by what she saw. Strickland asked Andy to help him set up the VCR. When Andy refused, Strickland pulled out a knife, not to threaten him but to save a colleague. A trip wire had been set up. One more step and Andy would have been splattered with red paint. Alright, he'll help. The teachers entered the classroom, and due to lack of funding, they still have to buy tapes for the old VCR. When it didn't work, Andy suggested letting the students go home. No way, said Strickland. Not while half the class still thinks the Civil War was between Batman and Superman. Nobody is going home. Andy figured out that one of the students was turning off the TV using a smartphone. In rage, Strickland grabbed the kid's phone and smashed it against the board. The big man turned on a documentary and ordered Andy to shut up and not interfere with the educational process. The students were out of control. A girl gave Neil her smartphone and he turned off the tape again. Strickland lost it. He screamed and then overturned the TV cabinet. He left the classroom and returned with an axe, which he used to savagely chop up Neil's desk. Strickland threatened Andy, telling him not to even think about turning him in. The principal was furious. The students had pushed him to his limit. They even hired a band that constantly followed him around. Both teachers remained silent. The children were also afraid to tell the truth about who destroyed the desk. But someone had to be held accountable, so the principal decided to fire one of them. Andy immediately pointed to his crazy colleague. He explained what happened, but also asked not to fire Strickland. Of course, Strickland was immediately fired. I'm going to fight you, the big man said. After school in the parking lot, he would beat Campbell up in front of everyone. It would only end when one of them was knocked out. Andy says he can't fight right now, but Strickland doesn't care about his excuses or his daughter's talent show. During the next lesson, Andy's voice trembles. The whole school already knows about the upcoming fight. Various rumors circulate about Strickland. Allegedly, he used to be in a gang dealing with debtors. He was also supposedly a crazy special forces soldier. According to another version, he was a cop who beat a criminal to death. In short, Andy concluded that he was already a dead man. Holly advises him to take one hit and pretend to be dead. But the gym teacher thinks it's a bad idea. After a hit from Strickland, Andy won't need to pretend. Andy wanted to settle everything with words, but as soon as he saw the historian, he changed his mind. Andy turned to the security guard for help. The teacher asks him to somehow get Strickland out of the school, but the most the guard can do is revive him after the fight. Miss Monet approached Strickland. In her opinion, fists don't solve the problem. He needs a knife. The redhead wants him to cut the pervert from forehead to jaw. Andy tries to persuade Neil to take the blame, saying he accidentally broke the desk himself. The kid agrees to meet Campbell halfway, but only if he buys him a MacBook Pro. Andy rushed to the store and bought the laptop. However, he ran into his wife by the car. The woman thought he was fired since he wasn't in class at 11.30. And if he wasn't fired, then what was he doing here? Andy then said he was buying her a MacBook, the most expensive model. It turned out their daughter had changed the song and costume for their performance. It was all because of a girl named Trisha who constantly bullied her. After resolving family issues, Andy ran back to the store to buy the laptop with all the remaining money. 
Even the seller knew there was going to be a teacher fight today. Andy and the boy went to the principal and told a new version of what happened, saying Strickland was not to blame and shouldn't have been fired. So if Andy recanted his initial statement, Strickland wasn't fired yet. Holly urgently called Andy to the gym. Strickland burst in as well, and the psychologist intended to make peace between them. But it wasn't necessary. Andy said that the historian would stay in the school. However, Strickland attacked him again, saying he didn't need this job. So why did he want to punch his face in, and why did Andy spend a ton of money today? Why couldn't his colleague just cancel the fight? According to Strickland, actions must have consequences. The damn students do nothing all day, and people like Andy still want to reward them. No one is held accountable, and today, Andy would be. If he didn't show up, Strickland could take revenge at any moment, even showing up at his doorstep. Andy called emergency services and explained his situation. The operator asked him to repeat and now a whole crowd was laughing at him. Campbell was completely deflated. During his lesson, he lamented how life and this particular school were awful. At that moment, a noose tightened around his leg and a horse dragged him down the hallway. He got covered in paint just like the gym teacher who also fell into a trap. Enough is enough. Andy was done being Mr. Nice Guy. He decided to frame Strickland for something he didn't do. Andy would get drugs, plant them on the history teacher, and then call the police. The gym teacher thought this wasn't manly. Besides, in his enraged state, Andy might actually defeat his opponent. The psychologist punched Andy in the ear, causing him to whimper, and all three realized the best option was to plant methamphetamine on Strickland. Holly kept some at home, but they'd have to buy from the school dealer. According to Holly, their old acquaintance Neil was into this business. When Andy offered to buy him an iPhone now, Neil replied that he'd rather rip his head off and crap inside. Okay, they'd manage without it. But Neil only had Molly right now. Andy had no idea what Molly was, but bought it anyway. In the hallway, our hero tried to hide from Miss Monet, but couldn't fit into a locker. The principal's car was vandalized and parked in the hall, and then they were called to the teacher's lounge over the PA system. Andy sneaked into the office and planted the packet of pills on Strickland. Now the trio of conspirators watched as the police acted. Unfortunately, the dog found nothing, and the cops left the classroom. Holly decided to relax and lit a joint. Andy snatched the joint from her and burst back into the class, but Strickland was waiting for him with an axe. He knew what his enemy had planned. To save himself, Andy quickly smoked the joint and called for help. The police entered the classroom and found the pills in Strickland's bag. He claimed they belonged to Andy. In the end, Strickland told the cops to go to hell, and they arrested both him and Campbell. From the police station, Andy called his daughter and told her he couldn't make it to her talent show. In the holding cell, Andy blamed Strickland for all his troubles, calling him a damn psycho. Then he whispered to a bald guy that Strickland had called him a fat coward and wanted to beat the beard off the guy sitting next to him if he nodded, meaning he was ready to start the fight. When Andy returned to Strickland, the latter suddenly said he had gone too far today and cancelled the fight, so there would be no fight. The historian nodded and the big guy jumped to his feet. He attacked Strickland, who beat him up and put him in a chokehold. The historian realized that Andy had six the big guy on him, so their fight was still on. Soon, both were released as the pills turned out to be regular aspirin. Andy made it to the meeting with the school board. During the meeting, the gym teacher and Miss Monet had already been fired. Now it was his fate being decided. He was made to wait. Not wanting to be late for his daughter's contest, Andy burst into the office, but it turned out he didn't need to report. The inspector and principal had already fired the maximum number of experienced teachers. They'd have to cut something else. Andy was furious about what they were going to cut. Textbooks or the computer lab? How was he supposed to teach under these conditions? He lashed out at both bosses and threatened them before rushing off to his daughter's contest. But he still didn't make it. The upset girl stopped her performance and ran backstage. Andy calmed his daughter down and asked her to return to the stage. She wanted to perform to a different tune. Her mom would cue it up for her now. It turned out the girl had written a profane song sending a message to Trisha calling her a little brat. Andy supported his daughter's creativity with a dance. The girl didn't stop even when the teacher turned off the music. The kids who had been bullied by Trisha cheered happily mom liked it too. Though unlikely to become the school star, her daughter certainly made an impression. Perhaps she would be expelled. Now it was time for dad to stand up for himself. Andy zoomed in on his scooter and dismounted. He was very serious.
The crowd greeted the hero with applause. Strickland greeted him with a smirk. The schoolyard was crowded with students. After a brief verbal exchange, Andy took a hit to the head and fell onto the asphalt, only to get up and continue the fight. He constantly ducked, dodging blows and bit his opponent's leg. The big guy picked him up and slammed him onto the pavement. Andy let the stapler go, paying for it with a kick. But a tennis racket worked against him. Strickland did well with the racket, getting Andy in the groin. Then he jumped on the bus. The students were ecstatic about the fight, with Campbell mostly having to run for safety. But one precise blow sent him into a knockdown. The crowd demanded that he get up, and he did. However, he immediately ran away and hid in the school. Andy attacked the big guy from above, and together they broke into the restroom, falling onto a student who was still occupied with his little friend. Andy dodged well but hit weakly, so he dragged Strickland by the ear. Together they were brawling in the principal's Toyota, Campbell tricked them, grabbed a fire extinguisher, and knocked out the big guy. He emerged from the fight victorious, but only for a couple of seconds before being knocked out. Strickland recovered too quickly, but Andy also needed to recover. His wife was in labor. Strickland drove him to the hospital. Andy thanked the big guy for the fight. Strickland got what he wanted. The news reported that the fight between the teachers highlighted the education system's decline. Andy admitted he was fired. The child was born and his daughter became popular after her performance. The principal came to the barbecue and said that due to media attention, he and the historian had become national heroes. He asked the teacher to return to school. The teacher agreed, but only on the condition that they reinstated his job and his friends. Now in the school corridors, he is no less formidable than his opponent in a fist fight.